It's Smartmatic, which is a company that was founded in 2005 in Venezuela for the specific purpose of fixing elections. That's their expertise, how to fix elections. The term crazy like a fox has never been so relevant. After false claims like that from Fox favorites like Trump lawyer and hard die victim Rudy Giuliani, the election technology company Smartmatic filed a $2.7 billion defamation lawsuit against Fox News, along with several on-air commentators, including Giuliani and Fox Business News host and Uber Trump fan Lou Dobbs, whose show was canceled last night one day after the lawsuit was filed. Joining me now is Eric Bollard, author and editor of Press Run Media, and Midwin Charles, civil trial and criminal defense attorney. Glad to have you guys with me. Midwin, I want to start with you. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but this lawsuit certainly <laughs> seems to have legs. Oh, it absolutely does, Tiffany. Uh, good morning, or should I say... Oh no, not afternoon yet. Um, but if you read the first, if you read the first page of this complaint, which is over 250 pages, I, you know this is something that I do here in New York. It's filed in a court in which I practice a lot. The very first three lines are: "The Earth is round. Two plus two equals four. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won the 2020 election for president and vice president. This complaint methodically, methodically goes through each and every one of the false allegations allegations and the false statements made by all of the defendants and how they basically together uh, set forth to have a disparagement campaign against Smartmatic. Not only do they go through painstakingly all the false statements, this complaint also goes through how Smartmatic was injured. We're talking consequential damages, actual damages, which basically outline the fact that they're going to lose business because of this. A lot of their uh, clients, current clients, are complaining, and they're also concerned about future uh, clients. But another way in which Smartmatic has been injured is something that I don't see often in civil complaints, is threats. Employees of Smartmatic have been receiving all kinds of threats and death threats, and this complaint, Tiffany, actually lists each and every one of the threats that they've received since the November 3rd election until the day in which they filed this complaint. It is incredibly descriptive. It is incredibly uh, uh, disturbing as well. When you read the alleged uh, facts by Lou Dobbs and Fox and Janine Pirro and so many others, and when you read the actual facts. For example, uh, uh, Smartmatic only uh, worked in L.A. County uh, for the 2020 election, and yet so many times we heard on Fox that they had machines in uh, the swing states, right? Arizona and Georgia and Pennsylvania, and absolutely none of that is true. So the facts are just so clear here. This is a very, very strong complaint, Tiffany. So, Eric, let me turn to you, because I've often wondered how Fox News is going to reinvent themselves in a post-Trump America. They're essentially being cannibalized. The crazies are eating the crazies. I mean, you've got these new outlets like OWN and Newsmax, and they have seen a, a, a ratings dip. Um, they did issue a statement on Lou Dobbs' show being canceled. Uh, they said Lou Dobbs is and was great. Nobody loves America more than Lou. He had a large and loyal following that will be watching closely for the next move, and that following includes me. I mean, you can't deny the timing here, though, right? I mean, this came right after the lawsuit. So what do you see? What's the future of Fox News? Fox is really uh, facing a perfect storm right now. I've, I've written about and monitored Fox News for 10 or 15 years. I've never seen them in the position they are right now. Uh, and the Smartmatic lawsuit is just really an exclamation point. Um, so Trump has left the political landscape. Right, so that he he's he's nowhere to be seen. He's not granting interviews to anyone or to Fox. Uh, that robs Fox News of hundreds of hours each each month for for to continue uh, Trump programming. Uh, Fox News is ratings. They are in last place for folks who might not follow the cable news wars. They are in third last place. That has not happened since before 9/11. They, they had a 20-year run for many of those 20 years. It wasn't even close. Uh, it's become more close over the last five years. They are now in last place. As you say, the right-wing base has splintered, right? Fox News was not fast enough last November and December to announce that 
you know, uh, Biden, you know, Trump, maybe, maybe Biden hadn't won. Newsmax, OAN, others ran to that fringe. We don't know who won. We may never know who won. Fox News belatedly tried to play catch up by then. The damage was done. Um, you know, we've never seen the splinter. It's, and it's really important for the Republican Party. For 20 years, the Republican Party could go on Fox News and reach the base, reach the, reach the followers. Now when the Republicans go on Fox News, they're not getting the whole base. Because, again, the right right wing has left Fox News. They've gone to Newsmax. They've gone to other places. So it, it's a disaster for Fox News. Uh, the Smartmatic lawsuit, for all the reasons uh, that were just mentioned, this is a disaster. Uh, um, I think we are going to end up seeing a massive, massive settlement, the type we haven't seen in decades in terms of media yeah. libel and slander. Uh, so it's only February, but Fox News is already in such a in big trouble. deep yeah. hole. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, but I, I do have to say, Midwin, I think, yeah, there is the issue of Fox News, but then there's also the issue of all those people who tuned into Fox News and believe the lies and consume that disinformation. Now they have more fringe outlets to go to uh, and consume even more incredibly uh, ridiculous conspiracy theories and, and more lies. What does this say uh, about the political landscape and cable news viewers who are opting to get their information from some of these fringe outlets? You know, it says that cable news has a broad reach. It says that they have to be very careful with what it is that they're saying. And it says that people are relying on them for what they believe to be true and factual information. And when we talk about freedom of the press, yes, media outlets have broad uh, uh, capability in terms of what it is that they project. Opinions obviously don't fall under defamation laws, but you have to be incredibly careful with how it is that you present things in terms of presenting them as fact. And what it tells us, I think, today, too, is we live in a country where people rely heavily on information that comes from cable news, and it can literally drive all kinds of, uh, of things that we've seen. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, we'll definitely keep our eye on this lawsuit. Thank you so much, Eric Bollard and Midwin Charles.